What's shaking, wrestling fans? It is Monday, September 15th. We just finished watching the go-home edition of Monday Night Raw. This Sunday is Night of Champions. Did tonight's show get us excited for that show? Did it hype up the matches of that show or what the hell happened? Well, we'll get into that in just a moment. For now, my name is Mike Payton. I'll be hosting tonight's festivities. And joining me first off, Mr. Tony Mango, the head man of SmartOutMoment.com. What's shaking, Tony Mango? Ah, uh, oh, man. <laughs> well, that's a good way to start. Uh, I, I'm, yes, it is. I'm trying to not show my disappointment with this episode because last week I started with that whole dramatic speech. This week I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play it straight. It's gonna be the straight man here. Uh, wait, we also have with us I'll, Mr. I'll Stephen Fuego, uh, the lead host of Unanimous Decision MMA and Addicted to Anime here on Mega Powers Radio. What's shaking, Mr. Fuego? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Uh, I, I feel like we're becoming a broken record here. This is what I think the fourth week consecutively that we've had a, an absolutely eventless Raw. There, there's been pretty much nothing. I, I can't think of a single thing that was special about tonight's Raw. And for that matter, a single thing that really got me more than just a little excited about this Sunday's pay-per-view and I can't even say that because any excitement I'm feeling is whatever I was feeling before this episode even aired. So it really didn't build anything. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do tonight. Uh, of course, this is the most interactive post-Raw experience available. We want to hear what you guys got to say about this Raw or whatever the heck else is on your mind. Because as you've seen the last few weeks, we've just kind of broadened things on the show. But uh, if you want to get in touch with us, the chat room is open. If you're on Blog Talk Radio, just scroll down to the bottom. You'll find it there. Or dial in area code 760-512-7247 is the number to get yourself in line. We already got a couple calls there. We're going to ask you guys just remain just a little patient for a couple minutes while we get things started here. And we'll get you guys on very soon. First off, I want to ask my co-hosts here the question I always start the show off with. What is the number one thing you took away from this show? And Wega, why don't you start us off? What is the number one thing you took away from this Raw tonight? I guess it was the Brock Lesnar and John Cena feud. And more so that the show didn't get any interest um, until Brock came in. It was like the whole show came a little more alive. And then after that, we was just left in our disappointed, fatal position waiting for the episode to end again. I can't even give any credit to the show itself for that. I think that just speaks to the electricity that exists when Brock Lesnar has a presence on and the screen. It um, also cements the fact that he shouldn't be on every week either. No, absolutely not. I agree with that. Uh, Mr. Tony Mango, what's the number one thing you took away from the show? It's not the number one thing. There's actually four things that were taken away. What? There's, uh, yeah, there is cheating. my interest in Night of Champions and three hours of my time. <laughs> That's what was taken away from me. <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck. Well, goodness, I don't even know where to go from there, folks. I mean, I guess let's just talk about Brock Lesnar for a little bit, because that was the thing that caught our attention the most. This show had no momentum going whatsoever. I mean, we didn't feel the energy from watching it. The crowd pretty much seemed like they weren't paying attention to anything going on. Uh, Even our chat room was pretty dead. We were all kind of focusing on other things. And once Brock Lesnar came, I think all of our ears just kind of peaked like hounds out in the woods. And all of a sudden, our (laughs) attention was locked onto the screen. It's like, yes, something cool. Brock Lesnar, do something Brock Lesnar-ish. And of course, within seconds, he gets into the ring. German suplexes John Cena completely out of the ring, making him look like a little bitch again. It was absolutely fantastic. And eventually, John Cena did get up, though, attack Brock Lesnar. They brawled around the outside for a little bit and got their pull apart in. Excellent, excellent job in that regard. And that's probably the only thing right they did going into Night of Champions. And hey, that is your main event. So I guess if you're going to get one thing right, why not that? But uh, aside from that, it's a, a, a very narrow pass in that regard. But what did you guys think about that whole segment, Tony? That was definitely the highlight of the night for um, the purposes of, like, actual entertainment. Because everything else was a dud, but that – you were totally right in saying that, you know, I kind of was just like, hmm, something to pay attention to? Oh, shit. Maybe this is going to be a better uh, – never mind. Everything's going to go downhill after this. <laughs> it's a shame, but um, 
like you said, uh, if they're going to get something right, they should at least get the main event right. And the segments leading up to this sucked. But Brock Lesnar coming out, and I'm not a huge big uh, Brock Lesnar fan, but him coming out gave me a little bit of a, a boost, a little pep in um, watching this. and A little pep in your step? I, yeah, a little bit. Uh, if If there's anything that I'm interested in, for Night of Champions, it's to see Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of John Cena again, because they've done shit all with the rest of the stuff in promotion tonight. So, hey, if we can get another thing with Brock Lesnar beating the crap out of Cena, that might be fun, but anything else that they did on this episode did not lead me to believe that I should pay attention to anything else. Wago, what about you? Being a person with the MMA background that you have, what do you think about Brock Lesnar being on the show tonight? I always love when Brock Lesnar turns up. Um, even if he doesn't do anything, just standing there looking like a badass just adds something to the show. And I let out a big laugh as soon as he German suplexed uh, John Cena. It was almost in comical fashion, how just easy and straight away he did it. Uh, first, I was a little mad that they let Cena get any offense in. I still wanted to carry in this story of Cena not being able to touch him. But looking at it uh, a little more objectively, the only damage Cena could get on Brock tonight was if he did it from a blindsided attack once he'd got thrown out the ring. So, um, I liked oh, he, it he broke his nose, man. He did some serious damage. Oh, that fucking pissed me off. Um, I don't think they've ever seen a fucking broken nose in their life because I don't know what they was trying to sell. The no blood, so <laughs> he was stupid. Some of the commentary is always ridiculous, so there's nothing new there. So I, outside of that shitty calling, it was a good segment. Also, I didn't like the segments leading up to it. Well, I was about to mention that exactly. Paul Heyman had had a few segments leading up to it. Uh, he had gotten dragged to the back by John Cena. He had Great Khali posted at the door, standing guard to make sure Paul Heyman is stuck in the room. And they, they did some of these like ridiculous Looney Tunes comedic segments. Uh, there was one where Paul Heyman was like going to make a phone call, but Khali took his phone and dropped it on the ground to break it, except that when the phone like broke into pieces, the screen was still on. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, but I, I did like the segment, though, when... John Cena actually brought Paul Heyman into the ring and Paul Heyman has that sort of um, the, the emperor from star Wars moment where he's like, yes, let the hate flow through you. John Cena hit me. That was pretty cool. Uh, it's hard to turn chicken shit into chicken salad, but uh, Heyman did his best with it. As Heyman does. Uh, Tony, you got anything you wanted to that? No, nah, but now that you brought up star Wars, I really want to watch star Wars again. <laughs> Star I would Wars much would rather. Awesome. I'd much rather rewatch Return of the Jedi, which is my least favorite of the three original trilogy, than to rewatch this episode of Raw. So, mm. woo, Star Wars, cool. <laughs> All right, folks. So as you can tell, we're we're a little down after this show. Uh, we're hoping some of you out there help get our energies up. We're going to be opening up the phone lines a little early tonight. Just want to remind y'all out there if you want to get yourself in line, go ahead and dial area code seven six zero five one two seven two. Four seven. We also got the chat room opened up. I see Forrest, uh, Ferris four one nine in there. Sorry you're sitting there by yourself, buddy. I mean you got uh, you got Tony and Wago and myself in there. Hey, if you uh, anyone out there listening as a guest, please register yourself with Blog Talk Radio. You can join Ferris four one nine in the cast in there, keeping the chat room popping as usually is. I think people are just kind of like uh, toned out after this these weeks of continuous bad raws not to mention you know people want to watch football and i think there's something else that's going out on monday nights now i don't know if anyone knows any information about that mm. can it be a fattening part two that'd be good <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic uh but yeah all right so let's go ahead and open up those phone lines we got our first caller from the 412 mr jd rep in pittsburgh what's shaking jd hey guys what's going on tonight Oh, uh, we're all depressed and pissed off and not happy about this damn show. How about you? Yep, and, and once again, you can count me in among the people, too. I mean, what a shit show this was for the go-home show in Lafayette tonight. I mean, to have Rusev, the commie bastard, and his little whore Lana with Mark Henry to close the show and put the rain thing in the semi-main event. Yeah, that's going to sell Night of the Champions for you, boys. Great thinking there. I mean, the whole Heyman thing, I mean, it was a little tacky, if you ask me. They didn't show Lesnar have a 
broken nose or anything. They had Kali pretend to be the bodyguard watching the door and trying to let uh, Heyman weasel his way out, no pun intended, however, and then, of course, break Heyman's cell phone when he tried to get out of the match. But, I mean, this was, I mean, they had only two good matches the entire night. The rest of it was just a piece of junk show, however. I mean, really, I think the Reigns are just absolutely going to be putrid tonight in more ways than one, you know? I, I know. I'm feeling it. And like I was just saying, our chat room is pretty bare compared to where it usually is. Usually we have a lot of people in there already keeping the thing moving nicely. Right now, I feel bad. Poor Forrest, Ferris is in there by himself. We appreciate him showing up. We appreciate you calling in, JD. We have a few regulars. But freaking Raw was so bad, it's driving away our audience. That pisses me off. <laughs> No, what pisses me off, though, like you said earlier at the top of the show, I mean, was it now? Three or four weeks now, we've had a non-finish to the show. I mean, the booking is getting more and more horrendously bad, however. I mean, this is not the time to do it, especially in the fall, however. If they wanted to do something like this, they could have done it in the early part of the spring, but they were so heavily into the Evolution Shield thing, and then they rushed the Seth Rollins heel turn. That's why they kind of got stuck with their wheels in track, in reverse, if you will. And it's been pretty much in reverse since then, if you ask me. And like I said, hopefully they can get themselves out of it because right now they know that I mean, four months now down the road it's going to be the Royal Rumble before you know it in Survivor Series in a couple months so they've got to really start getting better booking if you ask me I was uh, speaking in our, our private chat we have during the show and one comment that I made is I can't remember the last time we had a pay-per-view to pay-per-view segment of the year that was just so horrendous and uninteresting like I think we got to yep. go back to like that 2007 dark period to really like yeah. get back to that. 2006, 2007. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But uh, like I said, let's get to the high point and low point real quick before we have our uh, weekly segment, which we're very much looking forward to. Uh, the high point tonight, I would have to say. As crazy as it sounds, I think the first match, Jericho and Kane was a pretty good match right out of the gate. They, I mean, really got something going with each other. I'm hoping Jericho does beat Orton on Sunday. But, of course, you know Orton's going to probably have the authorities' uh, little backside kissing, if you will, to uh, steal a win against Jericho, but you never know. But the one thing I am glad, talking about the authority real quick before we get into the low point, huh? at least the last couple weeks we haven't seen Triple H and Stephanie on TV. I think they're starting to finally phase down a little bit more the authority storyline. I'm hoping this continues out. Because I don't want to see next Monday Night Memphis. Oh, guess what? We told you this was going to happen after a two weeks sabbatical. We're on tour, uh, touring different places, but we've been on vacation a couple weeks. Now we got to come back on TV and make asses of ourselves by having another 20 minute stupid promo to cut open the show, you know? But at least they're trying to scale back on the authority of the last couple weeks, and so I'm happy about that. As far as the worst segment of the night goes, I would have to say the whole tag team Divas affair. It was a joke. It was an absolute freaking ass joke, if you ask me, with AJ teaming up with freaking Bree, coming out to some of the worst music I've ever heard in my life, and then you have Nikki teaming up with Casper, the friendly ghost, and Paige. I mean, come on, that went three minutes. That was just absolutely hokey, if you ask me. Really, really hokey. And your Divas champion, Paige, not even getting an entrance. What an embarrassment. No. No. It is. You're right. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do, obviously, this Sunday, however, and see how much time they give Paige, AJ, and Nikki, you know? I mean, I'm surprised, however, they're not going to put that on as your pre-show match. I don't think they have, they, they, well, the only thing they said as far as the pre-show is going to happen on Sunday is going to have Captain Charisma back with his peep show, if you will, with Chris Jericho. Gee, that'll eat up a whole hour. Great thinking there, guys. Real smart. But like I said, I think the reins are going to be really, really bad tonight, if you ask me. I think they might be in the 2625 range. And if that's the case, they're in big, big trouble yeah at a time you think they would be pulling out all the guns to contend with raw and especially when they're going into this big pay-per-view on sunday and you know night of champions some people would debate is one of the bigger pay-per-views of the year and that's certainly not mm -hmm. what it's feeling like at this point no question about it. all right we ready for our ask, ask jd anything there we go. I like the bell. I think we got a new bell sound. I like it. I think that should be our good intro for So, yep, I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay. I like it. All right. All right. So let's pull a couple ones to get out of the chat room here. We got Ferris419 asks, what's JD's all-time favorite diva slash women's champion? Uh, right now, I, there's three I like. Melina. Trish, Mickey James. So I think those are my top three divas. I'm going to go with Melina, number one. Trish is not far behind. Melina's and Mickey's three, and Lita's number four. So those are my top four divas of all time. All right, this is a good one. Awesome Piano Man asks, Hey, JD, can you sing that song, Piano Man? 
Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a melody, and you've got a feeling it's all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, unfortunately, we got a smaller chat room, so it's going to be a short edition this week. But JD will certainly be returning next week, as he always does, and hopefully we'll get a lot more active for that. that I'm sorry, Daniel, you guys don't have any questions this week. I thought one of you guys would uh, throw out a question or two. I'm pretty dry this week. I mean, Wago or Tony, you got anything? I'm sure Drew would if Drew was here. Actually, yeah, Drew where? did mention something before. He said oh, that he, he was going to ask you, um, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm currently looking – well, right now I'm looking for a job, but if I had a chance, I would love to be in there with you guys talking wrestling each and every week. That's my mm. job. That would be my dream job. <laughs> I wish but it was a job too. This? Trust me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're all in the same boat of, I wish I could pay for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, is the bell for Ask JD? Yeah, that's the the bell is now the Ask JD bell. No, it's Ask J Ding. Oh, J D. I, I like it. That's, that's a nice little pun that's there. That's good. I like it. That's good. Oh, goodness. All right, JD. Thanks for calling in, man. Always good talking to you. You too, guys. It's always not even the chance to try to, and we'll talk next Monday when Raw is done with Met Raw from Memphis next. We should be very interested. Hopefully they won't embarrass the king next Monday night. Oh, goodness. Yeah. All right, man. Stay safe. Talk to you then. You too, guys. All right. JD calling in, getting creative every single week. These calls just get weirder and weirder thanks to JD, the chat room, and our very own cast of characters here on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio. I'm feeling a little bit better now. We got Awesome Piano Man joined us in the chat room. I didn't get to say hey to him, but what's up, Awesome Piano Man? Always good to have you around when you can make it. We know you got your crazy life going on. Always appreciate the support you're constantly showing for us, though. Uh... I guess we'll just go ahead to our other caller. Why the hell not? Yeah, we don't have anything to fucking talk about on about Raw. So. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring out a caller from the 941 area code. Caller from 941, you're live in the Raw Post Show. What's your name? Chris. What's up, Chris? How you doing? Good, how about you? I'm absolutely tremendous, man. What do you think about Raw tonight? It's all right. It was all right? Yeah. Why just all right? I, I like the Roman Seth Rollins match, even though that could, it was supposed to be a pay per view, but it's not. No, it's not even worth a pay per view now since everyone's seen the preview of it. Yeah, it was kind of stupid. They had the match, and then literally the segment right after it, they're like, "Hey, the rematch is happening on Sunday. You want to see it, right?" Yeah. Uh. Oh, uh, wait. Where's everybody going? I know. Yeah. What? What about uh Brock Lesnar? Did you like seeing Brock Lesnar tonight? Yeah, it'd be better to see him every week, but I think I think he's gonna keep the title. You think he's gonna retain this Sunday? I don't think he's way. I think that's just to keep. How long do you think Lesnar's gonna keep it? At least for another month, because they said his neck, no one contender is he's gonna be Big Show. Hmm. You think Big Show's gonna take it from him? Nah. No. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that. The last time that Nancy fought was up for a rumble. And Bitch Show got messed up. Uh, that's right. That was like a, that was barely a match. That was leading up to that was leading up to the WrestleMania. That's correct. I forgot. I actually forgot that even happened because that was so short and happened so long ago. Um. All right, man. Uh, anything else you got to say about Raw tonight? Um. See that Jericho and Kane match wasn't that bad. It was all right. Um, that was a good good start to the show. It's corporate Kane calling by what is his real name is. Okay, he needs to put the mask back on, but, you know, sell out. But, you know, mm-hmm. um, AJ, the AJ mask could have been longer. Mm-hmm. But what, what Nicky, Nicky, Nicky Bella did was, how did Nicky get a kid on Sunday? Mm-hmm. You, are you, are you going to be watching this Sunday's pay-per-view? Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do for uh, Lecker's match? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, AJ's and Jericho's. Nice, man. All right, so uh, let me ask you, what was your favorite part of the show tonight? What was your least favorite part of sh- of the show tonight? Favorite part was probably, um, let's see. Um, well, I guess two favorite parts. You got the Jericho mm-hmm. match and the Big Show pre-white match, which is all right. Mm-hmm. 
And the least favorite was probably AJ Thingy. But um and, and um um the thingy with Paul Heyman in the backstage. Oh, with with Kali, yeah, that was that was that was annoying. I was thinking of probably left him came back came backstage to be a Kali. Well, at least that's the best use for Kali. Better him there than in the ring. But uh, all right, man, thanks know. for calling in. Good call. Have a good night. All right. You too. With a call. All right. Two cool callers we had here on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio. Anyone else out there who wants to call and get your opinion about the show? We don't have Captain Insano here, but you're still welcome to call in no matter who you are. Area code 760-512-7247. That's area code 760-512-7247. We got the chat room filling up filling up a bit. We, we got Creep Buzz Under Radar in there now. What's up, dude? Awesome Piano Man, of course, Ferris419, as I said earlier, and of course our own cast in there as well. I still see a couple guests. Don't be a guest. Go ahead and sign up with Blog Talk Radio. Get in the chat room and make... <laughs> is, that, is that the chat room bell? Like every time I plug the chat room, I'm going to get a freaking bell now? Yep. Okay. The bell does, I... the bell does what it wants. Oh, okay. The bell's got a mind of its own. Well, you know what? I don't need the bell because I got my own thing. <laughs> Oh, no, I totally can't wait to Drew calls it. I'm going to ruin his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, where do we go from here, guys? There's not much to talk about from Raw. I guess let's just... Uh, let me just try to run down this chronologically and see if you guys have any words to oh, say about any of segment. <laughs> What's that? I can run it down. It's easy to run it down. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, well, uh, I'll, I'll just say the name of the segment, and you can say whatever thoughts you got. We'll do this like rapid fire. We could, we could try something new here for these shitty shows just to get through this really quick. So uh, we'll do this first. Chris Jericho versus Corporate Kane. Way go, go. What a shit. <laughs> uh, Tony. Sucks. <laughs> uh, 999 music video. Way go, go. Fucking cancer. <laughs> Tony. Loved it. Okay. <laughs> Jack Swag- I'll talk about it later. Okay. Roman Reigns. We're just rapid fire. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Roman Reigns backstage interview with Renee Young, where he says he's going to use his fist. Way go. Go. Impressed. Tony. What's up, Will? <laughs> Jack Swagger versus Bo Dallas. Way go. Go. Forgettable. Tony. I no longer believe. Divas tag match. Way go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Uh. <laughs> Tony. That's it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Big Show versus Bray Wyatt. Way go go. Meh. Tony. Big shit. <laughs> Usos and Sheamus versus the Dust Bunnies and Cesaro. Way go. This happened. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Taz Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi versus Cameron. Way go, go. Hits. Tony, go. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Miz and Damian Mizdow versus Dolph Ziggler and R. Ziggler. Way go, go. Match of the year. <laughs> Tony. Did they get the same coats from the same place as Cesaro used to? Quite possibly. Actually, I have one quick note about this one. I, I thought it's funny that uh, R Truth debuted as a lackey for Road Dog, and now he's a lackey for Billy Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> ding. <laughs> uh, uh, we had a promo of Seth Rollins impersonating a monkey. Way go, <laughs> Tony. Angry, hungry, homeless Seth Rollins cat monkey now? Fuck, <laughs> it's the to keep track of. He's ruining us. We made a monster we can't stop. Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. Way go go. Could have been better. Tony. Can't wait to see this at Night of Champions, right? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the Mark Henry Rally for America. Way go go. Why? Tony. Not. 
<laughs> well, there you go. There's our complete review of Raw because if anyone who missed it and wanted to get caught up, we finally did it for you because I, I have a feeling there's people out there who are getting annoyed that we never actually talk about Raw and we, you know, they might want to listen to us to actually find out what they missed. Well, there you go. That's what you missed. Awesome Piano Man actually says in the chat room, this all happened on Raw tonight? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe. All this stuff actually happened. I have the notes to prove it. Yeah, and I actually asked you earlier, what did they promote tonight? And you gave me a whole list. I'm like, oh shit, they did. I just can't remember a fucking single thing of it. <laughs> Creep is under radar saying, I just show up for the eccentric callers. It's good for <laughs> to show up. <laughs> Uh, uh, speaking that? of eccentric callers, if you want to call in and be eccentric, don't be afraid. We uh, we like you. Creep was under radar specifically is sitting in the chat room just to hear you talk about Raw or whatever the heck else is on your mind. Dial in area code 760-512-7247. Or if you're just listening in on the Blog Talk radio site, be sure to join us in the chat room. Oh. Didn't happen. This time. <laughs> what was that? No, oh, what did you get that for? <laughs> I was waiting for the ding because there was supposed uh, to be the chat I room. I totally point. zoned out. No, it's... <laughs> All right. Well, what the hell are we going to talk about now? Where's Drew? <laughs> is he like taping his microphone to his bike handles? Where is Drew? I didn't did know. the McDonald's people get to him finally and beat the shit out of him? <laughs> <laughs> he took his lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look at us now, hoping for Jeff to call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are you, Jeff? Call in, yeah, Jeff. Come on, we, Jeff. We're waiting for you, Jeff. We're, we're just going to sit here and wait for you to call Jeff. <laughs> yes, I, uh, yes, to Awesome Piano Man, I am hitting the bell with a mallet. That's why sure it's, it's sometimes delayed. Are you sure it's not a gavel? I'm pretty sure it's a mallet. Oh, okay, because that's a gavel. Oh okay. <laughs> <Fucking> conversation. <laughs> yeah, this is uh this is pretty much uh, where it's gonna go from here. So if you don't like our uh, our randomness and you don't like our off brand of humor, you're probably not gonna like the show going on from here. We gave you your raw review. You don't need to stick around no more. But if you want to just have us go craziness, hey chat room, let's just go ahead and open this up to you guys. What do you want us to talk about? Give us some suggestions. Ask us some questions. Whatever the hell you want. This is gonna be uh. Uh, people power edition of the Raw Post Show. People power. For the people that while actually we're waiting, are here. While we're waiting for them to throw out some suggestions, um, actually, there is two things from Raw I wanted to go a little bit further on. Okay. Because why not? You know, I mean, uh, we'll give people well, some this, more This is Raw. the Raw Post Show after <laughs> Yeah. You yeah, know, we might as well on the Raw Post Show, right? Um, anybody else really like Cameron's look? I uh, I love it, actually. Which one's Cameron again? The one in the skirt or the one yes. with the hat? Okay, skirt. skirt. It's yeah, Alina versus like Alicia Fox, it. girl. Yeah, she's the yeah. one that pins the, pinned her on her fucking stomach, right? That was fantastic. I, I gotta give her props for that. I actually thought that was hilarious, and I'm pretty sure she did it on purpose. So I major hope, props to her. I hope it's a work, because if it's not, I'm going back to watching NXT. Yeah, but and can I just say... She's she... going on NXT... So if you go there, she's going to be there. She um she actually was on a recent uh, uh, podcast. I believe it was uh, Talk is Jericho, and it was actually a pretty good interview with it. it. Was it was her um the redheaded person, and uh, I think it was one of the Bellas, and they were talking about uh, Total Divas for a lot of it. But they actually talked a little bit about their in ring training and all that. And she said how she's been working hard to try to get better, and she really wants to be someone that's an impact in this. Who knows, man? Maybe she ended up being like a Trish Stratus who came into this with no prior knowledge and just worked her ass off and became something good because I think she's got something there. Yeah, yeah, but Michael Hayes will put a stop to that. Yeah, if not him, then maybe Rusev. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing that we can talk about, though, and that I think we need to definitely bring up is that fucking commercial. Nine, that nine, commercial nine. that was the most brutal and awesome thing about this episode. I mean the the flashbacks that I got to like the eighties promotional tactics mm -hmm. was just swimming in my brain. Like they're literally singing everything that they're trying to pitch out to you. Mm -hmm. Original series and old episodes raw, but not last week's SmackDown because we got distribution rights problems to get away and <laughs> You know who they must have gotten for? They must have gotten the guy from Nick Arcade. 
<laughs> they probably did. <laughs> Never pay nine ninety nine. I'm heard this, up the price. When I heard this fucking uh, commercial, I just imagined some douchebag, bleach blonde, spiked hair loser band that fucking put this together. It just seems so fucking cheesy from something from the nineties. I bet they got the same band who did the free credit report dot com songs. <laughs> Well, you, you know how WWE usually operates. The next thing is that they're going to get Downstate to do a cover version of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that will maybe they can go uh, retro and get saliva on that shit. That okay. used to be their go-to band. Chris Warren Brand could do one. <laughs> nah, man. Triple H is running things now. Get Motorhead. <laughs> it's going to be a big collaboration like that uh, We Are the World, the, all the celebrities and stuff. We're going to get those people. We're going to get CFO Money. He's going to be directing everything. This, this is oh, important. CFO Money, so it's going to have a fucking siren yeah. at the start. World Hunger, nine ninety nine. This is equal level stuff. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, major props to the, the department that put that together. That, that was an awesome video. <laughs> I know a lot of people out there are probably going to be hating on it, but you know what? It was catchy. It was informative. It It's the exact kind of thing that they should be doing to promote the network. So props to them for that. I went to Jonna during this, and I went, can you hear that? And she just nodded and then shook her head and looked down. Um, so, so we got a couple of things out of the chat room that I'm going to pull out in a second. But uh, we actually got another caller on the line, so I'm going to bring them on. That'll so, be eccentric. Caller from 419. You're live on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio. What's your name? This is Ferris. How's it going, What's man? up? Holy shit. What's up, Ferris? How you doing? Oh, he called. Uh, well, nobody else was calling, so I figured I'd uh, I'd, I'd make my debut tonight. No, we, oh, we appreciate it, man. <laughs> it's, it's the season premiere of Ferris on Mega Powers Radio. Well, Jesus, man. You're going to get like your a... segment, too? <laughs> you can do the Ask <laughs> Ferris segment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, we'll introduce that next week. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure I have the theme music ready. All right. See if you can throw oh, in a man. few howevers tonight, Ferris. We'll keep this interesting. Oh, uh, well, what, I mean, I guess let's talk about something besides Raw, then. It was a total crap fest this week again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm just very frustrated lately. Um, you know, I'm still watching it, but uh, they they got to get something better. I mean, I'm, so, I'm really actually pissed I missed the uh, 9.99 music video. They played it like six times, man. How'd you miss it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I missed it. Um, so yeah, why I, I why know. do I, you I, keep I, watching? During certain segments, I always go into other shit. Like uh, I completely mm. missed the Cameron versus Naomi, but uh, I, I don't think I probably missed much. I'm sure you're not hurting too much about it. No, I mean there's nothing there you wouldn't no. see someplace else. Like it's the development of Cameron that we're like noticing, but there's nothing like special there yet that you need to go and watch this segment. Oh my god. Uh, but wh- why do you feel like you keep watching every week if it's becoming this consistently off? Uh, because it has been really good in the past. And, you know, there's, there's bits and pieces here and there that, that you know, really like my favorite part tonight. My, my high point was definitely the um, the uh, the Heyman Cena promo that they did in the ring mm. before before right before Lesnar came out. And, yeah, I, I totally picked up on that, too. I, I even said that I was like, hey, he's just like the Emperor from Star Wars. That's totally what I was thinking, too, which is probably what they were going for. Uh, but that, that was kind of cool. You know, the, I like the storytelling, basically. Uh, the I don't know. Cena does not stand a chance this Sunday, though. So, I mean, it's one of those I, I'm looking forward to seeing the match. But at this point, it feels so predictable that it's how is he going to lose? You know, how is Cena going to lose well, again? Well, I was just about to say, I, this is the first time I'm going to be dropping this prediction from me. But I think John Cena loses via tap out. Really? I'm pretty sure that's I'm pretty sure that's the first time he's ever gonna like actually tap out since he became Super Cena. If someone can correct me on that. I think he might have tapped out to punk. Am I am I No, wrong about he that? hasn't tapped out. The last time he tapped out was against Kurt Angle or Benoit. Yeah, wow. so I, I think that's the only way if you really want to keep this Brock Lesnar thing of dominance, let's see him get some offense in this time, but have Brock Lesnar put something on him that makes him tap out, whether it's uh, he wants to bring back the Brock lock or the, the Kimura. I would do the Brock lock because John Cena has those dainty little legs. You can make that look good. <laughs> so a- after after he whips his ass, is Cena going to disappear for a little while? He's got to, right? I, mean, I, I would think what, so. So what does he do after that? I mean, he, he comes off losing twice in a row in the main event of the pay-per-view. He's going to look super weak. And what, who are you going to put him up against that? Anybody. He's John Cena. Well, the John Cena is pretty Teflon. 
Knowing our luck, he'll come back at the Royal Rumble, eliminate both Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan in the finals, and beat Cena at Mania. Sorry, beat Lesnar at Mania, just to fuck us over. <laughs> yeah, like that's. You know what? That that's not completely out of the realm of possibility. They they do that year long Cena redemption story as they've done before. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't surprise me. Well, beyond yep. that, after after Lesnar retains. Mm-hmm. Who is he going to – I mean, he'll probably – I'm guessing he'll keep it till uh, WrestleMania. Who are they going to feed to to Lesnar next? That's I a mean, very who's good gonna, question. Who's going to face him? Who is, who is a credible challenger? I mean, Well, as our as our last caller said, the, the scoop, scoop, scoops is starting to say that it's going to look like Big Show is our next candidate. And I think that's a possibility. But I don't know why you don't use this before, team for but, some uh, other folks. I think Big Show's fine. Yeah. I mean, if if Brock Lesnar's going to really be there every single month defending that title, I think Big Show is a fine filler for a B pay per view. But along the way to WrestleMania, you're definitely going to need a lot more and potential candidates. I would personally look at. Um, goodness gracious! I mean, I guess you want to hold off Roman Reigns if that's going to be your big plan for the future. Uh, if you could put Cesaro in a good spot, maybe you can build him up to a point where uh, he's a credible contender. Wait, go you have someone. Couple. Uh, Sheamus is the first one that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, God, he, God. He, I don't like watching Sheamus, but as far as baby faces that make sense and have some legitimacy to them, Sheamus does. He's a big guy. He can make it interesting. Honestly, I've been thinking that Bray Wyatt needs to turn baby face. He's got stale now. That, and, that would be great. I'd love to see that match. And honestly, if he comes back pretty soon, fuck. Revive Roy back for a month, turning baby face and do the feed me more shit and feed Brock Lesnar to him and bear feed him to Brock Lesnar. Hey, if I fucking be okay with that, then I could say I was right all along about him not being done. <laughs> Give him the title, Nick. He'd be a six time <laughs> WWE champion according to his uh, bedside manners. <laughs> the mothers love it. The mothers love it. Tony, is there anyone you guy. think uh, you would like to see Lesnar against? Actually, uh, Wago and I were talking about this the other day, and we both came to the same kind of conclusion. You know, you might as well just do that with Sheamus because it, as much as Sheamus is kind of a bore, Sheamus versus Lesnar is something a little bit different instead of just doing Big Show or whatever. Um, if Batista can come back, do Batista. Ooh, if not, yeah, you know, one. you've you've got Dean Ambrose. He'll be coming back. Throw him in there. People would and, buy Dean Ambrose versus uh, Brock Lesnar. Why not? I know we joked about it on Smack Talk, but could you throw Christian back in there? I mean, he'd get fucking killed and might be re injured, but. You know what is I'd it like to see? Possible? I, if they were to, to put Christian in that kind of a spot, he couldn't do it solo. But something that I wouldn't mind seeing, and they would have to do it really soon. Like they couldn't wait too, uh, too long because then you're getting into Elimination Chamber territory, but just throw a bunch of people out there. Do like. I don't know, a fatal four way or a fucking uh, six person, what it was, a six pack challenge, is that what they're calling them? Hmm. Like, just add a bunch of people that can all get their ass kicked <laughs> and have Lesnar beat the living shit out of every one of them. The Christians and, I don't know, fucking Randy Orton or something like that. Just have him steamroll through five other guys and be like, yeah, eat that shit. At, what, what's the one after, um, Hell in a Cell. It's not a Survivor Series, right? I believe it is. Uh, it is Survivor Series, yes. Yeah, and then TLC. Shit, then, oh, then yep. TLC. Do it for TLC. Have him throw each one through a table. We'll yeah, have a Survivor Series team versus Brock Lesnar and have him crush them all. <laughs> yeah, fuck, at this point, why not, right? It'd be something different, and it's going to be better than just watching him have three matches against Big Show. God forbid if Alberto Del Rio was still here, you'd know that they'd put him in that spot. Oh, goodness. Ferris, who would you want to see Brock Lesnar face? Uh, the Bray Wyatt would be a good one. That would be a fantastic match, I think, if they turned him face. Um, God, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of looking down the roster right now, and I'm, I don't know. I mean, Brian, eventually, when he, whenever he comes back, but mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be a while. Um. You know, it almost Reigns, seems like you have another, to rely on that, these. Mm-hmm. It almost seems like you have to rely on these guys with these characters that you've already built, like in the last ten years, because you haven't spent enough time in the last five to use any of those guys to face someone like Brock Lesnar. Because Brock Lesnar is just on this whole other plane of existence compared to anybody else on that roster. Yeah. Oh, uh, if only they still had like. Uh, 
Undertaker there full time. Can they bring Del Rio back to get beaten up? I like watching Del Rio in pain. Can, can they just send Brock Lesnar after Del Rio? Like instead of like going to court, they just send Brock Lesnar to beat him up, and that's like settled. <laughs> Maybe that's how they can uh, settle the CM Punk 22-page legal matter. Yeah, do it with CM Punk, do it with Rey Mysterio. He could just be their new legal team. <laughs> yeah, that well, be then fun. One thing that I'm really happy with... about, though. Oh, go ahead. They could put him in a tag team with Otunga. <laughs> go ahead, Ferris. <laughs> I, I was thinking, uh, as far as tag teams go, or, you know, handicap match. Uh, you have Adam Rowe and the Bunny versus versus Brock Lesnar. And, uh, yeah, well, you don't that, want to bury the bunny. <laughs> I, I must say, he wasn't. They, they weren't on the show tonight, were they? I, miss, I, if they were, I don't I believe it. they were. Good, good. Keep them off the air. I'm, I'm not a fan of, of either. See, now what I can see happening in that match is Brock Lesnar would take the bunny and just like rip off its feet and then just carry him around like his lucky rabbit's feet. <laughs> that was kind of violent, wasn't it? Wow. Bad that I went there. Oh yeah, man, I want to see some German. I want to see some German suplex alterito. That should be awesome. <laughs> I would do a rear naked choke to the B. Wow, uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, Ferris, anything else on your mind about this show or anything else? Well, I just I was I was remarking that, that I think that's the fastest you've ever gone through the whole show. There's the you guys were talking for like 20 minutes, and then you went through the whole show, and then you're like, now what do we talk about? <laughs> So, At least uh, we went through the show. I mean, the last couple of weeks, the, the last couple of weeks, yeah, we didn't I, even like actually talk about the entire show. We picked like maybe one or two segments. And they're like, ah, fuck this show. Let's start talking about porn stars. <laughs> yeah. So you want to talk about porn stars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moo. <laughs> All right. Before I get time, Kyle, I'm going to let you guys go. All right. Thanks. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't go yet, man. No, you got to you, you do your high point, low point. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Shit, I forgot. Uh, high point, uh, like I said, the John Cena Heyman promo. I, I was, I was pretty cool. I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, the low point, uh, the Divas tag match was kind of, kind of pointless. Um, There's a lot of forgettable stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I consider the low. Oh, mm-hmm. one thing I did want to remark about is like, but there was a like more than usual talking in the uh, in the Roman Reigns Seth Rollins match. Like they were talking a lot. I don't know, you know. So that's something I've been picking up on more lately. I don't know if they're just getting sloppier with it or if I've been paying attention to it more. But uh, but during that one, especially, you know, every every few moves, he was, you know, they're calling to each other. And so I've, I've seen a lot of people calling them out. I think who is it? Botchamania is always uh, pointing it out during yeah. his videos yep. when people are talking. <laughs> I think that, that, that particular match struck me as, as a lot of those. I might have to go back and watch that again. But. I used to be judgmental on that shit until I just got sick of watching Cena do it now. I don't hold anyone to it anymore because he's the main guy in the company and makes it obvious. So, mm-hmm. yeah, lost, lost art. All right, Ferris, one more thing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> You've been initiated. Right, guys, take care. Thanks for calling in, man. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Ferris419 making his debut call into the show. Good to have you on, buddy. Always good having you in the chat room every week, too. Always fun having everyone interact with us here on the Raw Post Show on MegapowersRadio.com. We still got a few other people in the chat room there. Creep us on the radar. Awesome piano man. A few guests. Go ahead and register yourself. I'm going to tell you that every time. If you are a guest, register yourself. It's like registering the vote, only more fun. Register with blogtalkradio.com. Get yourself in that chat room and chat with everybody else. And, of course, the phone lines are open as well. Area code 760-512-7247. Yeah, I I, I milked that one. (laughs) Thanks, awesome piano man. Dropping it. (laughs) Yeah, Creepus Under Radar says, Tony, look at the chat. You're missing all the puns. So you you got to get yourself in there. Uh, Some buzz about the B and everything. Nice. (laughs) Uh, creep us under radar just called me out register is the 999 of npr yeah <laughs> you got I'm, I'm gonna have to come up with a theme song for it next week it's gotta be as literal as that one is just be like register to block talk radio <laughs> i'm sure i can find something else to make noise so it can be the theme song i mean hey i fixed uh, jd up with some theme songs <laughs> okay well i'm out of stuff to talk about <laughs> How about that professional wrestling, huh? Uh, who saw NXT TakeOver, huh? Huh? Uh, huh? Yeah, it was actually good. 
unlike this show. <laughs> and that's actually becoming a fairly consistent thing, which is rather depressing. I mean, maybe in like two years, it'll be cool when all these people are on the show. I cannot wait until Raw is filled with The Ascension, Sami Zayn, Tyler Breeze. Hell, even I want Tyson Kidd to come back to Raw. It'll be so much better than what we're getting right now. Here's the thing, though. I just think they're going to go over there, get lost in the shuffle, and then be damaged goods and have to work all the way from the bottom again. As much as it's meant to be a feeder system, I don't think they know how to bring them up properly. That's and on them, funny man. Enough, I've read an interesting article, and it's probably just dirt sheet bullshit, but people saying that um, Kevin Dunn's got some hand in how the NXT guys are being portrayed, and it's to make Triple H look bad, so... Hmm. Well, I don't know. I think that uh, it's every person is on their own. You know, Rusev is doing fine since coming up. Uh, Adam Rose blew it. That's on him. Bo Dallas is kind of floundering, but I think he's still got a chance of finding his spot there. It's just there's so many people in that mid card right now. That's why. Just because this isn't normal. There's just this huge influx of mid card talent that's starting to show off their skills with the Zigglers, the Sheamuses, the Cesaros, all these people just starting to spring up right now. Yeah? No? Yep. Maybe so? I don't know. Fuck. All right, I'm going to start pulling some more things out of the chat room that were suggested to us here. Awesome Piano Man says, So, our wedding colors are coral and silver. What do you think? Wago? Needs more, needs more salmon. <laughs> Tony? Not a big fan of coral, but then again, it is a wedding, so it's not like, uh, it, you know, it's one of the logos we'd be making or something. We're, we're targeting a different audience here, so... Uh, but let's sure. only uh, color code your wedding. It'll be the most organized wedding ever. I can't <laughs> remember an, a time, any point in history where me and Tony were discussing like creating a logo or a color scheme for something, and we discussed coral. <laughs> How the hell did you even come up with coral? I thought coral was an animal. I thought coral was like some type of rock. Yeah, it's it's coral a sea, it's a sea urchin. Uh, coral's like a pinkish hue, I think, right? Can I throw it in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's our uh, answer to your question, awesome piano man. But uh, once again, congratulations. We're all happy for you. Uh, we got another one from awesome piano man that says, "Curious, if you can sell me on Night of Champions, what would be the best promotion from the past few weeks that you could give?" Tony, picking what they've put out there, like what's the best yep. thing that they've done, or what I would do. Nope, what they've done. Fuck. Um, <laughs> like, let's say you had to make a, a video package to sell people on Night of Champions based on everything that's happened the last few weeks. What would you construct? Well, edict number one would be somebody has to sing it and sing everything about it. Um, <laughs> Night of Champions! <laughs> it's a pay-per-view event, but you don't really pay it too much anymore because it's special. It's only nine ninety nine. <laughs> Uh, fuck, I don't know. I mean, they really have done a shit job of this pay-per-view. They're not selling me on anything. Um, maybe they could just show the match of uh, Cena Lesnar and just say, you think this is cool? Well, it's going to happen again. You want to... Um, fuck, man, I don't know. This is really terrible. They <laughs> suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wago, good luck. All right, so... It's just a video package of Brock Lesnar kicking the shit out of everyone and everything. And it's just a guy doing a voiceover going, eh? Eh? <laughs> yeah, let's get that, uh, especially that segment where Brock Lesnar wrecked that Miz TV and took the couch and lifted it over his head and threw it out of the ring. That was pretty Yeah, cool. that'd work. Mm-hmm. For Ferris419 saying, I haven't renewed my network subscription. I don't know if I want to wait for Night of Champions. Or excuse me, I want to do it at Night of Champions or wait for Hell in a Cell. I was actually caught in a similar dilemma. I wasn't sure if I wanted to renew it in time for TakeOver or if I wanted to just wait for Night of Champions. I ended up just watching TakeOver somewhere else. Um, and I'm going to renew it for Night of Champions, I guess. I mean, it's only nine ninety nine. It's not that much, right? And how, fucking, how fucking sad is it that they know they've got all these renewals coming up, yet the product's this bad. And, like, I'm going to renew anyway, because I'm a sucker. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Pay-per-view, get a little, 
We did a little fine listen earlier in the chat. What's that? Sorry. No, was that Tony? We did a little science lesson earlier in the chat. I was explaining Pavlov's dogs to everybody, and that's why everybody's just going to sign up for the network again. Mm. Yeah, it's essentially what it is. Just uh, wrestling fans always going to follow that shit. Mm-hmm. They're going to go to their WWE Network subscription, and then they're going to go to jeffelzone.com and complain about everything. Yeah. One thing I won't complain about is NXT, though. <laughs> All right, we got another caller I'm going to bring on here. <clears throat> we got a caller from 540. Caller from 540, you're live on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio. What's your name? Jeff. Uh, you guys remember me? Ah, Jeff, what's up, man? John, no, not Jeff, John. <laughs> oh, okay, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, Jeff. Uh, I'm doing very good, doing very good. Have, I've had better days. But let yeah. me tell you guys something tonight. That hmm. raw sucked. Oh, yes, it did. That was the suckiest raw I've ever seen in a long time. I mean, Mark Henry versus Rusev, the storyline, the segment in the main event. I mean, hmm. come on. Seriously. Wait, you mean that didn't get you super stoked for Night of Champions that you're going to pay nine ninety nine for? I still, I still want to watch Night of Champions, but... I mean, come on, creative team. Mark Henley and Rusev, the fucking main event for tonight? I mean, Jesus. I'm pretty sure that uh, the sorry. Raw creative staff is off watching football. That's the only excuse they could possibly have for these last couple of weeks of Raw. Oh, I, I, can, I can honestly agree more with you that on that question. Um, also, another thing that fucking sucked for me was Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. I mean, we just saw Reigns beat Rollins, and then Michael Cole goes into this. Oh, for just announced, it's going to be Reigns versus Rollins again at Night of Champions. I mean, you give this match away on free TV, and yet you're going to put it on the pay-per-view? I mean, what the hell, WWE creative? What the hell? Mm-hmm. I cannot agree with excuse, you more, man. It's getting absolutely me, ridiculous. Excuse me, screaming, but but this is no, just it, coming from a WWE fan. I've been you're not waking anybody in my doing, house, man. I've been doing it for two thousand, <clears throat> and tonight, just you know, it just realized to me it sucked. Now last week was good. Don't get me wrong, but tonight just did it. Just did it for me. But uh, I like. I liked where uh, Cena and Lesnar fought, and I liked the way Great Khali was like the doorman, the bodyguard man. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know, I was really hoping. Do they have a, Do they have a Rivers down at the uh, Cajun Dome? Do they have a what at the Cajun Dome? Rivers. Rivers? Yeah, I would imagine there like, might be. Like like water feet. I was really thinking Cena was going to uh, take Hayman into the water <laughs> and he didn't bring Brock Lesnar here, which, of course, he knew Brock Lesnar was going to come. So well, is here that we the, had uh, all the of Brock and is all that, that. Is and it I, water the what? natural habitat for a polaris? <laughs> you just made me laugh out loud for that. Because <laughs> pol- polaris or walrus, I don't... I don't give a damn. He, he's still a walrus to me. <laughs> and he's still a horse's ass. That's Absolutely. Triple H recalled it, which, thank God we didn't see Triple H, too. Yeah, where was Triple H the this week? I didn't even realize that he wasn't there. And Stephanie Eagle. Just, just Orton, Kane, Rons, and Well, Orton was doing some sort of an interview, but... uh yeah, and I think the match between Jericho and Kane wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty bad. wasn't wasn't like their old feuds, but they'll do. <laughs> um. All right, man. What was your favorite part of Raw tonight? What was your least favorite part of Raw tonight? Well, the favorite part had to be Cena and Lesnar, and the least part had to be those two, those two things I was talking about mm-hmm. earlier on. Yeah, so um You gonna be watching anyway, Night of Champions? Before I, what? You gonna be watching Night of Champions? Of course I'll be watching Night of Champions. 
That, but um, anyway, before I uh, before I uh, sign off here, I uh, want to make one quick note. What's that, dude? What is that? Um, go Baltimore Orioles! <laughs> uh, oh, hey, we have a question for you, actually. Creepers under radars asks, uh, ask not Jeff what he does for a living. No, guys, I'm not Jeff. I'm John. Hey, right, he said not Jeff. Yeah, you're not Jeff. You're not Jeff. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> well, I'll just hang out and watch wrestling and tell him that's what I do. And if he doesn't oh. like it... <laughs> That's an incredible life. Yeah. Well, all righty. I want to live the life of Jeff. All right, man. Have a good night. All right, Jeff. All right. Thanks, Adios. Jeff. All right. Thanks, Jeff, for calling in once again. Goodness gracious. You know the best thing is that our chat room just joins us on our jokes and I don't even think they even like understand. Because there there really is nothing to really get. So. It's quite literally as simple as referring to John as Jeff and now it's not Jeff and then it's just like now it's not Jeff. It's like, no. Wait, John, I thought it was Joe. No, it's Jeff. John, right? what? No, it's Jeff. Yeah, we were, we were totally no, it's not Jeff. getting confused about this now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alan. No, I think it's Alan. <laughs> it's, it's Paul. Uh, Wait, who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! What the hell's Drew? Like Frank like, and Kevin or something? <laughs> I, I seriously think Drew got lost on his bike. Yeah, what the fuck is Drew? Is he still eating those stale animal crackers? I think he ate them. And then he passed out in the drive-thru of McDonald's while waiting for a car to come, since he can't actually order drive-thru until a car goes through. (laughs) (laughs) Then he asked someone to sing again, and they just knocked him out. (sighs) Yeah, the one guy was just like, I already told you the last time, only if you pay me, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome piano, man. Where's Jeff? Jeff had to go. (laughs) I do like uh, Creepus, though. We're all horrible people on the same page. <laughs> yes, we actually happen. go by the mean click, and yeah. glad to have yeah. you aboard. Now, hold on a minute. I'm going to go ahead and call you out on this. I remember Creepus under radar. The very first time you showed up to one of oh, our yeah. shows, you were, like, burning me up because apparently I was, like, mean to Miguel or something. That's yeah, what true. do you got to say about that? Yeah, and then following that, as I started a sentence with, uh, and he goes, oh, way to be fucking professional, way go. <laughs> so we actually thought at first, Creep, is that you were Miguel, so should we refer to you as not Miguel? <laughs> yeah, not Miguel. <laughs> so, yeah, so there you go. You were you were a not something before not Jeff. <laughs> Ooh, he's going quiet. Oh, lol, that wasn't the start. <laughs> We we corrupted you into a worse person. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the lady that was saying John Cena was good looking and uh, yeah, and I hung up on her. I should have kept that lady on. That I wasn't sure was a lady, the not lady. That so wasn't a lady. <laughs> Melissa, Melanie. I don't know. You could hear them trying not to laugh in the background, thinking they were so fucking funny. Maybe it was Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> Creepus equals not taco. <laughs> well damn uh, you know what's goodness. sad but we've made that many jokes that people actually think Miguel's a Mexican now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know people out there are listening to us in the archive form uh, if you're not listening to us live you're missing out there, with all these extra laughs that we're having this is all based on the people who are hanging out in the chat room the people are phoning in and you want to be a part of that as convenient as it may be to listen to us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube and smartoutmoment.com and of course we still appreciate you doing that and you know if you, that's the only way you can please continue to do so but if you are free Monday night immediately following Raw you should be here every single week megapowersradio.com joining the chat room with the fine feathered folks that we have in there and also calling in do I get a bell? can I get a bell? woohoo 
And from there, I don't know where we're going. Uh, anything from the chat room you want to throw what at the us? Hell? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I won't be on this show much. You cannot miss out ever. That's from Austin awesome Piano Man, who I he has a he has a crazy life. He's getting married very soon, and he's a busy man. But he still listens to us every week. Not just this show, but also Smack Talk. And who knows? He might support other things we do too. Awesome Piano Man is indeed just as his name says, awesome. Yeah, but is he a piano man, or does he just have an awesome piano man? We could ask either the Watchman King, or we should watch Man King and see what he says. Oh, wait, what what was, uh, it was Piano Man on Urban Dictionary, I think it was, right? Yeah. Do you remember I showed you that? Yeah, um... I'm gonna pull pull that up. No, no, like all, right. Last definition or something. All, right, all right, so awesome piano, man. I'm glad you're here. I am going to read this out on the air and just just so you can enjoy this. All right, um, this is on Urban Dictionary, the definitions that they have for piano, man. <clears throat> Number one, a song by Billy Joel about why we live our lives the way we do. All right, everyone knows that one, right? So number two, a nickname for the greatest singer-songwriter ever, Billy Joel. Also a pretty obvious one you got there. All right, number three. A nickname given to that weird guy who is just insanely good on the piano, who despite his weirdness is capable of bringing men to tears and women to orgasm through his playing, derived from the Billy Joel song of the same name. (laughs) Guy, who invited that weirdo? Girl, it's cool. It's just Piano Man. Guy, sweet. Hey, man, do you know how to play that song? All right. Number four. (laughs) This is where it gets good. Number four, when a girl gives a foot job and sh- shoulder massage simultaneously, she hugs him from behind <laughs> while jerking her feet in an upwards and downwards motion around the penis and uses her hands on his shoulders in a way that is similar to playing a piano. <laughs> and here's the example. Bobby, I totally want a shoulder massage, but I also really want a foot job. Dana, it's okay. I'll do the piano, man. <laughs> Danny and Amanda were talking about it today. <laughs> and lastly, number five, piano man ate about Long Island faggots. <laughs> and the so... example, the example is it's about L.A. You stupid conservative wannabe Bronxite assholes. <laughs> So, does his name actually mean, oh, I just got an awesome piano, man? <laughs> in exchange for allowing Coral to be the main color in the way. <laughs> so, there you go. Which one of those are you Are you, Are you? you an awesome example of on those? Are you the awesome uh, foot, bo- foot job massage? Or are you the, uh, the awesome not about Long Island, you faggots? <laughs> <laughs> I love how somebody must have been so angry enough that they added that definition in there instead of just leaving a comment on the other one talking about the song. Like they felt the need to be like, no, 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 no. We have to fucking scream this shit out. It's not about this. Oh, Drew just Drew just said he called him. Oh, well, let's uh, let's get him on here. I think. Drew, is that you? Uh, hey yo. All right, thanks for calling in, Drew. You doing? How you doing? Uh, we're mooing good. How you doing? I'm uh, doing pretty good. Did I miss anything else important? Any uh, important subjects? I heard stuff about the piano man, Urban Dictionary. How'd that go? Oh, pretty, pretty much been pretty the most fun. important thing. Yeah. Pretty no, fun. We had uh, we had another rousing edition of Ask JD. It was pretty cool. Oh. We had uh, we had Jeff about. call in and tell us that he's not Jeff, but. We're still calling him Jeff because he's Jeff. He finally, he finally said that he's not Jeff. He did say Drew, he wasn't to Jeff. JD, what he did for a living, right? Did uh, did JD not answer my question about uh, which was his favorite face, uh, Foley? Oh, that was your question. Did we you ask him that last week? Answer. Yeah, he was supposed to give me an answer. Did he not give me an answer? I thought he gave you an answer that last week. Yeah. Oh, he said, no, uh, I have to think about that. I'll give you that answer next week. Oh, well, you should have been here to ask him it again. That's your fault for not being here. All right, explain yeah, your tardiness. Do you have a doctor's note? Uh, uh, hang on, let me check my wallet. 
Do we really need to have a doctor's note to explain Drew's tardiness? <laughs> uh, I got that. Uh, I get jokes. Uh, awarding ten points to myself for that one. That was, uh, <laughs> awesome it's piano funny. man says he misses not Jeff. We all miss not Jeff. <laughs> hey, not Jeff is the coolest thing since sliced bread. Everyone knows that. Are you in a wardrobe, Drew? No, I'm in my hall hallway. I haven't I haven't been in my room yet. I, I You're in a hallway closet. I was over at watching the football game at one of my friends' dorms and football. I feel like there's football. Well, I was going back and forth between wrestling and football, and then I got to the point where you guys were just talking shit about it. So I was like, eh, it's probably better if I don't watch it. He has a point. Mm, indeed. Yeah. Was it? Uh, hmm. It wasn't as offensive, but it wasn't good. But Mark Henry, main eventing. Raw, how'd that go? Um, was it was a match? He was very black and very bold. Was that really what they ended Raw with? Yep. Yep. What he does? Rusev is the next the WWE World Evolution. He's winning it off of Brock Lesnar. He's got to put that camel clutch in. Lesnar's going to tap in like two seconds. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anything else? Anything of importance that you need to ask me? No, I, dude, this my... raw sucked. All right, this yeah, raw we sucked. We already talked about this. You would know if you were here. We already moved on to greener pastures. We're talking about cool things, and you want to come back up here and bring us back down talking about raw again? What the fuck? Sorry, right, damn. What do you guys want? I'm sorry. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. It's your responsibility to bring it back up, so you decide what we talk about now. It's on you. Yo, the fuck, kid. No. Who's the weirdest person you've bumped into at college so far? Like, have you? <laughs> so is there like one of those weird fucking kids that runs around with all their books or something? Um, there's there's quite a few. There's a few kids that you just like look at and they're like, oh my god, who is who? How did he get into college? Uh, there's a few of those. Uh, you, the way we describe them is that like there's people with a certain thing, and you don't want to think is everyone you're gonna be like uh, pizza guy or. Uh, book guy there's this kid he is a whistle guy and he just whistles everywhere he goes and on that app yik yak everyone just talks shit about him so it's really funny he whistles everywhere he goes and it's really annoying um there are people I, I mean there's some weird people like uh i saw this guy he he was walking really fast he had all of his books like you mentioned and uh i mean yeah there's weird kids but the weirdest person um, I don't really talk to many people, mainly because uh, a lot of people are just either douchebags or, you know, like those fat, big men. So um, when it comes to the most weird, good question. How, many, how much that? of your lunch money do you have left? I, I mean, um, we we actually do everything. The, uh, our student ID cards, it has uh, uh, credits and comments cash. We use those two things to buy uh, your... Lunch and stuff. Ooh, is that new okay, sound? What's that for? Can someone put him out of his misery? Drew. Um. Yes. What was that sound? Is that new sound? Yes, it is. Oh, what? what, what which one is that? Yeah, is that Ferris four one nine said it for me. What is it? Wait, what is it supposed to be? There was a bell. It's Wago's new toy. Oh. Wago's gonna have a bell. All right, that, that's the new gimmick. Wago has a bell. <laughs> um, like, matter of fact, you just went with there. It's like it's a fucking bell. Wake up, a bell. It's a bell now. Okay, okay. Just move on. It's a fucking bell. <laughs> you sounded like no. so pissed off for no reason. <laughs> like, man, why didn't I think of that? Drew's oh, <laughs> like but legitimately that... asking a serious question of like, oh, we got a bell now. That's kind of interesting. And you're just like, yeah, it's a fucking bell, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we heard that. Uh... When it comes to weird kid, there's this kid. I was in the common area getting a pizza hut, and there was this kid. He was behind me, and you know he was, you know, it was on his. He had like these like big old uh, headphones, not earbuds, like the big old headphones, not like the Beats, but like the like off brand uh, cheap ones that you get from Walmart mm-hmm. or something like that. Like skull candies, and, probably. Yeah, no, they weren't. No, they weren't skull candies. They were. It was, I am. I don't. I don't think they were bows, but uh, there were something else, and. Uh, you know, I'm waiting in line. He started shouting, not at me, but to some person mm-hmm. walking. 
and I forget what he said, but he just looked, gave him the look of disdain, kind of like Damien's uh, like elbow of the stain or whatever it was called. But I like, you know he gave him like the look of dude, you don't want to fuck with me. His eyes like popping out of his skull. Yeah, like you know, it was like uh, you know, like a angry cat or like ang- yeah, I think it was angry cat or something like that. Seth Rollins angry cat. Yeah, that's who it was. Oh, you're what and the that is weird. What did you met. just say? Yeah, dude, that was tough to follow. So there's this guy. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I heard, right, you were so, talking about uh, some guy who whistles all the time, and people were talking about it on Yakety Yak. It's actually Yik Yak, but Yakety Yak will do just fine. I'm going to walk in my room now, so you guys continue the conversation while I try to get my earbuds and my phone charger because it's from... Oh, dude, totally time. just wake up your fucking roommates while you're on the call. Maybe, I don't know if they're in here. They might not be in here, and they might be. Let's find out. Okay, how many fucking doors are on that hallway? Just do knock a door run on every one of them. <laughs> oh, good, good thing I sleep. Okay, so can I turn the light on for a second? Uh, what? When? Uh oh. There's shit everywhere. No. Damn it! There's shit on the windows. Oh Did my I? god! My house is full of shit. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get a text from you, dude. Hey, don't worry, man. Not the big All right, I'm just going to put <laughs> Drew on mute for a moment while he sorts that out. Always professional here. I'm uh, <laughs> my goodness. You know, I'm sorry to the folks who are tuning in for the first time tonight. Do you think this is the way things always are? I mean, it's kind of becoming the norm the last few weeks. Usually we do talk about Raw. Like, we actually will spend a good hour, hour and a half talking about Monday Night Raw. Uh, not tonight <laughs> not the last few weeks <laughs> sorry <laughs> all right see if hey, we used good. to have episodes where we ran out of time and we had to rush certain segments like well all right we're running out of time here and uh we need to get some plugs in so real quick what did you think about this one that was good oh, that one that was bad you know is it the us? few weeks it's been like yeah is it us? Like, are, are we becoming more disenfranchised and that's why we're not able to talk about it as much? Or is are, is it, are these Raws really that bad? Is it like everyone else? Here's the thing, Peyton. You're one of the most optimistic people I know when it comes to wrestling. So if you can't think of anything good to say about it, then there's probably nothing good to say about it. Yeah. Drew, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? <laughs> beating off his microphone? What the fuck? <laughs> All right, I'm just giving it a, uh, a piano, man. <laughs> 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 uh, I was gonna put him on mute for a second. Um, yeah, Mega Powers Radio is piano manning WWE Raw. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, everyone's kind of agreeing. Uh, Creep is under radar, saying, uh, "Wait, awesome piano man." Saying, uh, oh, whatever the fuck these people are saying. They're all saying the product sucks, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, the guy <laughs> said something. Maybe it is us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just me. I don't know. All right, Drew says he's good. Let's see. Can we put Drew on without being bombarded with noise? Drew? Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> not as much noise. Is that better? Well, just the first sound <laughs> I heard was... <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. It was uh, someone was making a lot of noise. Probably, Hickey um, swear. You know, so, um, yeah. so who are you going to get to sing the outro with you tonight? Who I don't know. I have to, I have to have to go back to McDonald's for that one. Well, you better start peddling. <laughs> yeah. was, no, no. In, in, interesting enough, uh, I was over at my friend's house and we were hungry, and they told me about this uh, this business that these college kids start, was where they're it's open to one o'clock, and like you know, like the usual places that don't deliver, like McDonald's. B-dubs or like Applebee's, they'll drive there, pick up the food for you, and bring it to you, essentially. And we did that, and it was actually really good. You know, like we only had to pay like a five dollar fee for the delivery. So, yeah, it was uh, pretty good actually. Who would have thought college college kids are becoming smarter? Yeah, they've actually been doing that for a yeah. long time. But good for them for having that entrepreneurial spirit. It's basically like the college equivalent of having a lemonade stand. No, it's a college equivalent of having a bounce house business. Oh. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, Why don't believe you me, do I that? know. I'm you know, I'm the triple H of the bounce house biz. I and I'm the bounce house prince, as you call myself. You know. Not anymore, you're I'm not. You're, 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 you decide to go off I'm, and do something else, all right? You're, you're not I, in the listen, business I'm anymore. Like, I'm, I'm you revoke your right to the throne. Are, you, you Can you be Triple H at the same time as being a Fiora? Okay. I thought Triple H was a Fiora. Is that what we're dealing with? You're the Triple H to my sister Stephanie, and I'm just Shane? What? You're Triple H, my yes. sister Stephanie, and I'm Shane. Is that why, what we're going with? Why would you say that? Like if anyone doesn't well, know what this joke's about, they're totally <laughs> fucking lost at this point. <laughs> Well, well, we've gotten to a point now where even the inside jokes that we say we're not going to say on the air, we throw out references we, to, and then eventually we just end up explaining them. So at the end of the year, people are going to know everything. They're going to be like laughing along with us. No, like, well, uh, the PS4. chat room was yeah, definitely like making Jeff jokes before. Like before they like yeah. we even had the call today, they were like, oh, I miss Jeff. Like <laughs> we've like, called them Jeff twice and they, they caught on to that. We have a smart we have smart fans. They, they catch on to our mm-hmm. jokes real quickly. Oh, yeah, was, so, I think it was Awesome well, Piano Man specifically who called us out on the Eliminator. Yeah, it was uh, Awesome Piano Man. Did, uh, yeah, then he realized what fucking assholes we are. Or I should say you. You the one. It was fucking you guys that started that. I, my hands are clean of that one. <laughs> so, uh, Mango, did uh, Matt from Botchamania ever end up using your Eliminator ending of the episode? I don't think he did. If he did, he never gave me any kind of credit or anything that I know of. <laughs> That shit gets pulled off YouTube all the time anyway, so even if it was yeah. there, it would have been gone. Yeah, unfortunately, but still. If Unless they decide that, to reactivate one of his old channels funny. at random. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but I wouldn't do that, right? By the way, I got a message back from the Better Business Bureau that said they finally decided to pay attention to my um, request that I sent to them, mm-hmm. and that they're going to give Google until the 27th to reply back to me. Before doing anything, like they're not gonna reply back. <laughs> they never did it the first time. So that's another company that you shouldn't waste your time with. Better Business Bureau. If there was a better, better Business Bureau, <laughs> then uh, yeah, who, the do you, best, who do you report the them best to? Business Bureau. Exactly. The Better Business Bureau for the Better Business Bureau. The Better Best Business, business, business Bureau. Bureau. The BBB for business BBB. Bureau. This is I a see. terrible Ignore. line of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we must we as well start wrong. talking about awesome. taxes. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, hey, people like Star Wars, right? They like, you know, lightsaber fights and mystical planets and all that. So when we make the new yeah. movies, let's talk about uh, trade tariffs. Yeah, the embargo is the reason why I watched episode one, not Darth Maul. <laughs> <laughs> the embargo. Like tariffs and shit. Like, yeah, I, I don't want to hear about the Sith and the, you know the old Republic and all this kind of stuff. I want to know like I do taxation without representation and a vote of confidence for the Supreme Chancellor. <laughs> We're gonna dump all this tea into space. It's gonna be insane. <laughs> it's funny. That's like our third Star Wars reference tonight. Star Wars is damn. What were the first two? Uh, well, or there was the one with the Emperor and uh, Paul Heyman, and I thought there was another one. Maybe I'm just making that up. Doesn't matter. So, um, Brock Lesnar, was that a hit or miss tonight with him? Oh, well, it was definitely a hit. Mm-hmm. Always was it a hit? Mm-hmm. Well, I thought Wago mentioned something about how uh, Cena shouldn't have got any offense in during that beatdown he, segment. He did, or but just the wrong. attacking segment. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I, I saw that part. Like, my roommate, but I was over at my friend's dorm, and they, you know, watched wrestling when they were younger, so I had to explain stuff to them. And uh, they thought it was, like, amazing to see Brock Lesnar because they didn't, but they knew he was back, but, you know, they're like, oh, dude, he's a fucking monster. Just they could tell by that one suplex that he gave because, like, he just fucking threw Cena. And that's a good thing about Lesnar. He just fucking throws Cena around like a fucking rag doll. That's the best part about it. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. the chat room so, earlier was think, calling for uh, a Drew White versus Brock Lesnar match. Mm-hmm. I saw well, I saw Michael Burhan. I mean, I mean, I don't want to. I, I, I listen. I don't want to come into retirement. Jay! What are you talking about, Doug? Kid, You're fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, Chris I don't, is in the chat right now. Says, "Why isn't Drew stuttering tonight? Is this not Drew?" <laughs> yeah, Drew. What the fuck? Yeah, not Drew. <laughs> Why don't you go away and come back when you're Drew? I don't know, dude. This is uh, weird. I will agree with you on that. This is uh, different. 
Um, this is uh, a different Drew tonight. This is a uh, steady, uh, normal I, Drew. I bet, I, Drew I bet all of Drew's time in college is like making them all like socially normal. <laughs> nah. I mean, I really like, nah, of course. No, I wasn't, well, I wasn't really socially awkward. I just, you know, don't like speaking to people who I don't really know. Once I get comfortable around people, I, I get really, I go, like when I first met you guys, I remember the thing on the first time. This is true after a blowjob. Chris on the radar. <laughs> well, not, well, no, you know, we, you know, we usually, when we get off, just uh, do, from doing a show, doing a show, we do, yeah, we without just without stuttering well, at all. That's bad of it. Hey, we play Mario Kart together. I mean, what the fuck? Actually, playing version like this. Jesus Christ. I know she would be. Oh, shoot. Right. I, I had a fucking, I forgot. I had a really good Ashley story. Like, I saw something that, Maybe want to just like show you guys it, but I forget what it is, so I have to look it up on my phone really quickly. Yo, I missed like, that. Was definitely... That was a rapid uh, fire of stuff that just happened right there. Uh, <laughs> we just, for the first time, officially tossed out there a real quick tease of our Los Matadores theme. <laughs> uh, oh, you did? You <laughs> wait, 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 you mentioned that? I, I did kind of drop a tease of that, yeah. There's, there's another yeah. inside joke for you guys to try to decipher. <laughs> <laughs> if you there's guys... also a bit of. If you guys listening ever want to sing along to Los Matadores theme, we figured out the lyrics to it, and that's um, it's a song that somebody sings after they got a blowjob, and the lyrics that we've settled on are just got my dick sucked singing a song about a blowjob that I just got. And we have been singing singing this this. for fucking months. The live event I just did last week. There's a video of me singing it. I but, think it, it depends on the feedback I get. I'll, I'll, I, I'll, I'll there's a reason why it's about a blowjob, though. That's because it actually sounds like... How else would you describe that music? Like, it's the kind of music you listen to where you're, like, strutting after getting a blowjob. You know? Like, <laughs> like, I like to think of the... Uh, and we, we all mentioned it, too, is the, the Spider-Man 3, when he's running, walking down the feet, you know, stretching his feet out, pointing at people while he's going. Right. Oh, yeah. And there's a little slide when it gets like passes the hot girls who like fix suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and now every time Lost so, Dories comes out, it's 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 done. They're 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 done. It's ingrained in our heads. But yeah, now dude. what's gonna be even worse is now we gotta think of it, which person's theme song in WWE you sing after you just got a piano man. <laughs> <laughs> sing us a song, piano man. I just got a piano man, my shoulder seal, really good. <laughs> you know, I I honestly thought I had some hot women on my Tinder, but you know, like all, the only ones who like share their moments are like the ugly ones. Like, who wants to cuddle and the same person every week? I think I need to unfollow them. I gotta end my streak of what I have four hundred one matches. Well, but yeah, get a cuddle buddy application. It worked well for Peyton. I mean, except Peyton is like top notch. Like he is like Simba. Okay, top of the line. I'm more of the long lines of uh, Timon. Okay, I'm the mirror cat that no one wants around. You know, I end up leaving. Uh, Drew, discovering a new let me world give you this piece of what? advice, and I send this out to all of our listeners out there: grow a beard. Ooh, well, ooh, well, I do have some facial hair. I mean, I don't mean to brag, but I got my beard mustache going. <laughs> Whose facial hair do you have? <laughs> my own it's my own i swear no you don't not even kidding i was gonna send you guys a picture yesterday but there's a picture of me dressed as uh seth Rollins, angry teenager man my stepdad thing like literally for not buying you a ps4 I, I, so, for not buying you a ps4 man, I'm uh, I, a PS4. I'm gonna eat these blinds uh, I, uh. I, I, I dropped PS4 and something that I might want. So, you know, who knows if I get that PS4 and I could bring it into this fucking joke. Oh, creep us under radar. First place. Creep us under radar saying I got one already and he doesn't mean a PS4. He actually means a beard. <laughs> oh, that's for you, creep us. You know, uh, you know, people people say you don't, you're not officially uh, done growing until you have a beard. So, you know, maybe I'll grow 12 inches. I'm well, you, you might want to hold off on that beard then, because if you stop growing now, you're going to be fucked. Oh, I know, dude. I'm, dude I, I've, I've met, like, two kids who are, who are smaller than me on campus. Like, everyone's taller than me, everyone. Yeah, but they're midgets. That don't count. 
Oh yeah, there, there's quite a few bitches on campus. I wonder if there's metrics like you know how you could look up like demographics of school, like the male to female ratio and like ethnicity and all that. I wonder if there's one that you could look this up one? like by height, and Maybe. you could find out what the oh, shortest school is. So you could like go there and feel like normal. There's a lot of females at my school. I think the it's like sixty percent female, forty percent male at my school. There's a school down camp down the road. It's like eighty five percent male, fifteen percent female. And that's uh. Uh, engineering school. It's one of my, one of my best friends is going there. Sucks for him. Fun fact. Good. Hey, yeah, sucks I know, for based on the friends fucking, that we uh, fucking heard that you brought on, it sounds like that'd be the right school for them. <laughs> uh, uh, no, the friends I brought on, one of them, uh, he's at Basic right now. He's up in Great Lakes for uh, Basic. Uh, he's the one who sung the outro. The other one, Luke, he works two jobs and he's going to online college, so... Yeah, you know, um, yeah, none, none of them are engineering majors. So I wonder how many people out there are just pressing play now and like just tuning into the show at this point and hearing us talk about Drew's college. What? I mean, my my social life apparently is a major topic on the show. I, I mean, JD's Ask JD is the biggest segment that this show has ever brought. Well, Ask JD so gets his own music. We we don't have music for Drew talks about college. Oh, I see some girls as the same news. I didn't see it was. But, uh, shoot, did JD get his own theme music today? Yes, he did. Uh, you, why are you giving in the peer fucking pressure, okay? JD, come on. Ask for some stuff. He needs to work for it. Okay? Well, this I is the JD show, man. Kidding. JD comes on here and oh, he gets cool. his time, and I, I just fill out the time in between. Yeah, it's kind of like the old episodes of Raw where the main events would go on first and then the rest mm-hmm. of the show would play. Yeah, so... <laughs> or, or like tonight's episode Lester, where the main, ev- main event went on Lester. midway through the he episode. Yeah. <laughs> so he's Brock Lesnar. Okay, I'm not sure. Cool. I'm not sure. I get this. Creepers under radar says this must be one of those self help podcasts. Said no one. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Ding show. Just Ask JD time. is better than the highlight reel peep show in Ms. TV put together. Yes, it is. To be fair, what it's, about, not hard, uh, it's not hard to be better than Ms. TV. That fucking segment's awful. What about the cutting edge? Is it better than the cutting edge? Oh, and Carlito's Cabana. I forgot about Carlito's, Carlito's Cabana. Cabana. Ah, Cabana. What was, uh, <laughs> Carlito's Cabana? I don't remember that one. <laughs> Didn't Santino uh, have one? What's that? Santino had one for like two weeks, right? Santino? Yeah. He had tea time with Santino. I have... <laughs> Didn't he have something Didn't in the room? Got bell going off the yeah, no, he had tea <laughs> time with Santino. That was when he brought out Seamus, and it was like him and Kozlov drinking tea. And like Kozlov oh. got like, the only chant he ever got in his entire career. <laughs> that was the only chant. God damn. So good old Rusev. <laughs> good old Rusev potato. <laughs> good old white Rusev. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, yeah. If it, if it ain't white, it ain't right. Everyone knows that. Did you guys Have find that bell? Potato? <laughs> yeah, we just found that bell nah. sitting on the side of the road. The story behind this bell, someone brought it for my cat. Now it's mine. Oh, <laughs> uh, is your cat nomming on your blinds yet? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <Cool>. <laughs> oh, awesome piano man's oh, got a point. Ironic that Wago hates the Bellas, but he's playing with a bell. This is Ooh. a Bella. A Beller. It's a Bella. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Alright, sure it's not a bell end. <laughs> nah, Sean is playing with his. <laughs> Should I kill the spider next to me? Uh no. Yeah. Spiders are your friend. Uh, yes or no. I heard one yes, one no. Sway goes down to you. Yes or no. Fun up now by people because I just sung to that. <laughs> Creepers is under radar. It's like question mark, question mark, chaos. <laughs> That's the song you sing after you just got a circumcision. 
<laughs> I just got my dick cut. <laughs> so I have a question. Is this the all talk show or is this the raw post show? Uh, it was the raw post show for like 10 minutes and then it became the all talk show. <laughs> Uh, you know that song used to be like a more of a mainstay we used to play that like almost every week here uh, I know Awesome Piano Man remembers that and loves that song very much But uh, oh, I love- oh we had like another <laughs> random character that was uh, on the show what was, I got his name here uh, Alexander Kirkovich Alexander Kirkovich remember him uh, Dmitry Vodkaberger <laughs> yeah another, another random Russian to put into the uh, the miscellaneous characters bin well that was actually a real guy that they were showing no he wasn't well next thing you tell me vladimir putin is real too that's true i don't know (laughs) uh i if not if you guys want to listen to not jeff i'm pretty sure he's gonna have a show debuting soon called not utaku nation I'm going to turn it into that show. I heard it's supposed to be really good. Not. Yes, it will be on presently. Ooh. Yeah, I really want to listen to episode one of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes. Good old laughs. <laughs> All right, I think we're getting to the end of the line here. Uh, we stretch this out about as much as we can. We appreciate everyone who showed up tonight, really. Uh, we know these Raws have been just torture lately. And, you know, you guys being dedicated to us, showing up for the show, keeping the chat room fun, calling in, making this all a good time. No matter how bad Raw is, we always have a good time here on MegapowersRadio.com because you know, we have fun with each other and because we have fun with you guys, too. But let's wrap things up here with what we always do, the good, the bad. And the ugly. Yes, this is the good, the bad, and the ugly, where we talk about what our favorite part of the show was, our least favorite part of the show was, and what we thought the most embarrassing, horrible part of the show was. Drew, making all this damn noise. You go first. <laughs> I wasn't making any noise, though. The people are on me, of course. So what does but, something uh, like push you over? Um, no. Am I good? No, no, awesome no, piano. I don't know, man. Do you still, do you still have your lunch money on you? Um, let me check my wallet. Um, in a sec, why explain my good, bad, and ugly? My good is going to be uh, the Urban Dictionary Piano Man, which is all good and bad. Bad is going to be uh, myself, and the ugly is going to be Stephen Wayne's cat. <laughs> wow, that was pretty personal. Uh, Wago, what do you got to say about that? Um, my good was the part of the show, show that Drew was on. Uh, my bad was the part of um, the show that Drew was on. And the ugly is that Drew's dad hasn't brought him a PS4. All right. I think Legos is jealous that me and my dad have like a, a very good relationship. Mm, well, that good. You don't have a PS4. <sighs> uh, Tony, you're good, bad, and ugly. All right. I feel kind of weird here because I'm actually going to talk about wrestling. <laughs> yeah, right. I like have an actual good, bad, and ugly here. <laughs> My good is the 999 commercial because fuck it, it was a stupid ass raw, so that was like the pinnacle of stupid ass decisions, and I fucking love it. Bad. What incentive do I have to watch the rematch between Rollins and Reigns at Night of Champions now? Nothing was on the line. There's no stipulation. So what the fuck? And the ugly. It's not the way that she looked in the match because Cameron was pretty hot, but the match itself was fucking ugly. Hmm. Always easy to give it to the Back Davis. Camera, no. uh, well, my Back good, camera, bad, no. and oh. ugly. Uh, my good, I'm actually I'm actually going to break my own rule, and I'm going to give it to a couple things here. First off, that 999 music video, fantastic. The whole Brock Lesnar segment as well. And I also want to give a special shout-out to Cameron's not pin. You know, pull that joke in. It was a pin that wasn't a pin. I thought that was really funny. My bad, I'm going to give to... 
the Divas match. Not the one you were talking about, though, but the tag team match. Because Paige got no entrance, yet she's the Divas champion. And this match pretty much did nothing to get me any interested in the Divas division, which was starting to look good the last couple months. And all of a sudden, it's just dropped off. And the ugly was this main event segment we had with Mark Henry and Rusev and the rallying and Alexander Khrushchev, whatever the fuck his name is. Fuck that shit. All right, we'll pull a couple out of the chat room here. Awesome Piano Man says the good was piano manning. The bad was no Jeff, but we still got not Jeff. And the ugly was not Tacos College. What the, what the, Jesus Christ, the chat room's even wackier than we are. What the f- <laughs> Ferris419 says good, the bell, bad, not enough questions for Ask JD this week. And ugly, great colleague getting screen time. Can't argue with that one. Yeah. So that's going to be concluding things for us here on the Raw Post Show on MegapowersRadio.com. We got a few minutes here, and we're going to spend it telling all of you people out there what else we got going on in our lives that you might be interested in checking out. Drew, start us off, dude. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, check out the Drew Crew of Buck Tony's Tights. And, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, way go. (laughs) <laughs> All right. If you like MMA coverage of all the bells and whistles, then check out UDMMA.com. You can go to Facebook.com slash UDMMA and Twitter.com slash UDMMA to keep up with us on social media. Also, check out Mega Powers Radio, and we'll have a date shortly for our episode on Code Geass as we cover and analyze and review that. Hmm. And to, for our Facebook group, go to Facebook.com slash Addicted Anime Fans. I like that plug. It had a good ring to it. Uh, Somebody going down uh, a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony. Uh, whatever you do, don't go to smartoutmoment.com unless you want to find out whatever we have to say about wrestling, because that's not what this show is about, right? This is about other shit. <laughs> well, fine, I'm going now, Dave. Uh, YouTube.com slash SmartOutMoment. The Facebook and the Twitter account is also at SmartOutMoment. You can find me on Bleacher Report. Pay attention to not only SmartOutMoment, but also Fanboys Anonymous, because we've got three more contests that are going to be coming up soon. So if you like winning free T-shirts, then that's shit that you might want to get involved in. If you loved what we did this week and the past few weeks on this show, you're going to love the All Talk Show coming soon. And if you want some... uh, little bits of heads up here and there and some information and whatever uh, to what's going to happen with that. You can follow it on facebook.com slash all talk show, youtube.com slash all talk show and twitter.com slash the all talk show. Cause some other fucker took all talk show. Wow. All right, folks, if you've enjoyed my voice this evening, please follow me on the Twitter at M R P A D E N. That's Mr. Payton. You always find out the latest things I got to say about wrestling, movies, TV, video games, or just random crap that's annoying me throughout the day that I feel like posting about. And if you enjoyed this show, please join us every single Monday following the conclusion of Monday Night Raw, where we will be here live on megapowersradio.com. But if you can't be here to join us live, you can also check out the show archived easily at smartoutmoment.com, which will also have links to our feed on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and YouTube. YouTube. Easy to find the show, easy to interact. We have the phone lines in the chat room open for our live listeners. Or you could chat with us all throughout the week by either using the hashtag Raw Post Show, or if you're on Facebook, join our official Facebook group at Facebook.com slash groups slash the Mega Maniacs. That's Facebook.com slash groups slash the mega maniacs all right folks thanks so much for listening in we really appreciate it. everyone in the chat room awesome piano man creep is under radars ferris 419 and all the guests we got that are just chilling out there all the callers tonight we appreciate you calling in as well for drew white for steven juego and for tony mango i'm mike payton we'll see you guys next time here on megapowersradio.com